welcome back to Broken Knights Games. My name's Sam, and for those of you who don't know, I make game dev related videos, and I post them every other Friday on this channel. Um, and I'm also working on a game called Sumo Showdown, and that's a local multiplayer fighting game uh, where you control sumo wrestlers. Uh, but the thing about that is, I'm kind of at a point where I need to do a lot of play testing, and in order to do that, I need to get people to come over and play my game which is kind of hard to do with the given situation that's going on. Uh, so I decided to take a quick little break and work on a, a side project of mine that I've been itching to do for a really long time, um, and that's creating a, a dungeon crawler. Specifically, I wanted to make a dungeon crawler where the dungeons are procedurally generated. So that's something that you hear about a lot. A lot of games, um, they have a lot of procedural generated content where the levels are built you know, by an algorithm. So I thought that was really kind of fascinating and kind of cool um, and it would be fun to play with. So in this video, I'm gonna show you my random dungeon generator and how I went about building it, uh, specifically around the algorithm side, like um, kind of the thought process of how to go about building something like this. Um, I'm not gonna to get too into the weeds with the code because that's really specific to what I'm doing here. Um, but if we kind of take a step back and look at the, the algorithm as a whole, um, I think it'd be interesting or helpful for those of you kind of wondering how would you break a problem like this down. So how this algorithm works is um, kind of follow the component driven design. So at the top level component we have a dungeon um, and then a dungeon has rooms and then the rooms have openings and then those openings are in charge of creating other rooms. And all these pieces kind of communicate to each other at different uh, through different layers and steps. So. Starting at the top level with the dungeon, um, so step one, we spawn a room. And then step two, we look at that room and ask, does it have any available um, openings or unconnected openings? If so, then we tell that room to spawn its adjacent chambers. And at this point, the dungeon just kind of waits for the room's openings uh, to be created. So then after the op all the openings have spawned a room, then the, the dungeon is going to add those rooms to um, a, a variable that it's tracking. And then step six, it repeats step two through six. So it'll start, find the next available room that has openings that are unconnected and go through that until all the rooms that are returned are closed off. So then what would this look like at the room level? So what would the room do? The room, step one, would get all the room openings. So find all the spots where you can spawn a room and then iterate each of those openings and spawn an adjacent chamber. And then kind of similar to the dungeon level, the room's gonna wait until all the adjacent chambers are spawned and are in a valid state. And I'll explain what that means in a little bit. Um, and then lastly, it'll notify the dungeon, hey, I have these new rooms and they're ready to go. So then what would this look like from the room opening? So step one, we're gonna get available pieces from the dungeon to spawn. So I have a list of prefabs in the dungeon um, for all the different rooms and hallways that, that a given opening can spawn. And then step two, we're gonna spawn a connected piece. So it's gonna sp spawn a new chamber or hallway or whatever. And then step three, the opening is gonna wait for uh, what I'm calling a validation period to complete. So we're gonna spawn the room and it's gonna wait until the room is confirmed in a valid state. And I'll talk about that in a second here. And then lastly, it's gonna mark the opening as connected. I have a chamber connected to this opening and it's gonna notify the room that, hey, we have an adjacent chamber ready. So what is, how does the validation work? How do we make sure that we're getting a valid dungeon at the end? So when a new room is created, it starts off in a valid state, uh, but there's a couple of things that can happen that'll mark it invalid. So I'm doing some collision detection and a room will become invalid if it ever intersects another room. <laughs> and if a room becomes invalid, the room will destroy itself and notify the connection point that, hey, this prefab that you tried to spawn doesn't work, try a different one. And then, so the, the connection point will try its next prefab. So what will happen if all the prefabs that the connection point has available to use um, are attempted and nothing fits in the spot? available so that at that point the, um, the connection point will just put a wall there instead of a room all right so i'm here in unity and you can see here this is an example of a dungeon that was generated so you can see it's got some uh, rooms and hallways and chambers so i'm just gonna hide that 
So basically every dungeon will start with a entry chamber and then it'll kind of sprawl out from there. So I have a few prefabs created um, under dungeon. Uh, so I have it kind of broken up between chambers, doors, halls, and rooms, and then connection points. So I have different size chambers. So if I open up one of these, for example, uh, this medium chamber, everything's kind of structured the same. So, um, but if I expand my prefab here, so basically I have the walls, the floors, um, the connection points and validators. Then I have my lights grouped as well. So, um, the walls and the floor I have separated out with the geometry and then I have all the colliders, um, also similarly with the floors. And then under connection points, I have my connection point prefab. So I have these connection point objects that have their own um, chamber connection point script. And basically uh, I assign what valid adjacent chambers can spawn. So I have an enum created for all the different kinds. So I have a hallway, I have a corner room, a small chamber, medium chamber, large chamber, etc. A room like this, you can't spawn a room without having a hallway first. So that's basically why I have valid connection types. And then validators, that's kind of interesting. So I have um, a collection of objects that they're just called dungeon validators and they have a script on there uh, that basically just listens for collisions within all these colliders. Uh, so if if a new dungeon spawns it'll and it over intersects with this, then we'll know that it's an invalid piece. So if I click play and we go to the scene view, <clears throat> I'll just drag this out of the way here. Um, so if I click this generate button, you can see how the dungeon kind of expands. I'll try that again. And I set it up so I can um, keep on generating new dungeons. And then um, another cool thing I have on my dungeon um, is I have, I call it generation bias. So um, I can say how many target medium and small chambers. So if I change, if I change this to like three or two and then regenerate, We'll see that we'll get a, <clears throat> a larger dungeon. And also you can see it, um, as it's generating, if the rooms don't fit, it kind of corrects itself as it's going. And that's the, the room validators. So this one's kind of like a labyrinth. That's interesting. And then another cool thing about this is if it spits out a dungeon that I like, I can just take that generated dungeon and then drag it and create a prefab out of that. So I don't necessarily always have to create these at runtime uh, for the player. I can always um, create some, some dungeons and then modify them later if I wanted to make uh, some handmade levels. So there you have it, that's my simple dungeon generator. I'll probably add to add more to it. Like I need to add doors and loot and enemies and things like that. I might build it out more and may maybe make it a game and maybe release it. I don't know, it's pretty early so far, just kind of playing around with the idea and also just kind of learning some techniques and methods. So if you like this video, subscribe to my channel, uh, give me a thumbs up. And also if there's a game dev topic uh, specifically around Unity or uh, C Sharp, um, Feel free to leave a comment to let me know what you'd like to see. And as always, thanks for watching. Catch you later.